So you finished factoring your quadratic. So what do you do next? Well, your next step is dependent on the form of your problem. In other words, you could be working with a quadratic expression, equation, or function. And really, depending on which one you are working with, the remaining steps of your problem are just a little bit different. So let's talk about a quadratic expression first. Well, you've already finished factoring, and so if your directions are completely factor the expression, then we're done. But if your directions are to evaluate the expression when x is equal to some value, then we have to insert x into our expression. If our directions are to evaluate the expression above when x is equal to 3, really all we have to do is plug 3 in for x everywhere. And really, we have the freedom to put 3 into the factored form or into the standard form in order to evaluate it. And as you can see, when we put 3 into both the factored form and the standard form, we get negative 12 for the value. And the only other potential directions you could get for a quadratic expression is to find the values of x that make the expression equal to 0. Well, this is really just going to behave exactly the same as a quadratic equation, which we'll talk about next. So let's look at a quadratic equation. Now the only difference between the quadratic expression and equation is that our expression is now set equal to zero. And for this video, we're going to assume we already have the factored form. So if our directions are to factor the equation completely, then we're already done. But if our directions are find values of x that satisfy the equation, or solve for x, or what values of x make the equation true, we still have one more step to do. But lucky for us, 2 through 4 are all asking the same thing. So let's look at the quadratic equation 3x squared minus 1x minus 2 equals 0. Well, that's the same thing as the factored quadratic equation, the quantity of 3x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 1 equals 0. And if you recall, we can use the zero product property on this factored form in order to proceed. And remember, the zero product property tells us that if a times b is equal to 0, then a is equal to 0, or b is equal to 0. Well, for our factored form, we can think of 3x plus 2 as a, and x minus 1 as b, and both of those are multiplied together, so that means that 3x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0. And working with these, we now just want to isolate x, or solve for x. And so when we're trying to isolate x, we're first going to get rid of the constant, and so for 3x plus 2 equals 0, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And for x minus 1 equals 0, we're going to add 1 to both sides. That gives us 3x equals negative 2, and x equals 1. And really, we're done with this right side. And on this left side, 3x equals negative 2, we've got to divide by 3, and we're going to get x equals negative 2 over 3. And this gives us our two values of x. x equals negative 2 over 3, and x equals 1. And now, we simply just plug x equals negative 2 over 3 when x equals 1 into the factored form of the quadratic equation. And in between each step, we just continue simplifying until we eventually get 0 equals 0, which tells us that x minus 2 over 3 and x equals 1 are two solutions to the quadratic equation. And doing this process is how we satisfy the directions that are associated with 2 through 4. So now let's look at the directions for a quadratic function. And you know you're working with a function when you have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And once again, we're going to assume that we already have our quadratic function factored. So if our directions are to factor the function completely, we're already done. But other directions could be find the x-intercepts of the function, or find the values of x that make f of x equal 0. And once again, 2 and 3 here are exactly going to be asking us to do the same thing. And we're going to pretty much do the same process we used for the quadratic equation, except the format of our answer is going to be a little different. So let's look at the function f of x equals 4x squared plus 11x minus 3. And that factors to f of x equals the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity 4x minus 1. And for both the second and third directions that we had, we're going to set our function equal to 0. And if you look, really on this right side, x plus 3 times 4x minus 1 equals 0 is the same thing as just a quadratic equation. And so we can treat x plus 3 as a, and 4x minus 1 as b, and since we have a times b equals 0, then x plus 3 equals 0, or 4x minus 1 equals 0. And now we isolate x or solve for x. For 4x minus 1 equals 0, we're going to add 1 to both sides. And for x plus 3 equals 0, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. 
and that gives us 4x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. And so x equals negative 3 is done, but on the left side we now got to divide by 4 and we end up getting x equals 1 fourth. And so the difference between the function and the equation is how these values are going to now turn into our answers. So now we put the x value into the x position of a coordinate and we make y equals 0 and that represents an x intercept. Our two solutions will be 1 fourth 0 and negative 3 0 are x intercepts of the functions. And just to check that this is true, we're simply going to put 1 fourth in for x or plug it into our function and we're going to put negative 3 in for x, plug it into our function. And as we continue simplifying, we eventually get f of 1 fourth equals 0 and f of negative 3 equals 0. And so 1 fourth 0 and negative 3 0 must be x intercepts of our function. And so now we solve 2 and 3. And that covers all the different types of directions you should see whenever you're working with a quadratic expression, equation, or function. I'm Joe, and thanks for spending time with me.